Hello, this is a very quick video of how to add a directional constraint to the eyes so that wherever you place that directional constraint, the eyes are looking at that particular direction. There's two ways that you can do this. You can do this so that the directional constraint when move closer to the eyes automatically make the eyes turn inwards like they would in real life. Or as we're going to be doing this particular case, we're going to be making it that so that no matter how close you bring the directional um, constraint or the um, controller to the eyes, it does not make the eyes cross-eyed. In this particular case, we're going to be setting it up using the deformers. The deformers are great to use because it doesn't permanently apply any changes to the geometry. It only shows the deformation when the deformation is turned on visibly within the viewport. You can do this by pressing the O key to go to the options and then select Enable Deformers. To be able to do this, we need to make sure that each eye is in its own item mesh. You can see here that I've got eye right, eye left. I've also got the outer shell of the eye as well, which I'm just going to turn off for the minute so we can select the eye. For the moment, I'm going to make sure that the head is turned off, just so it makes things easier to see. What we need to do, we need to make sure that in the items mode, each eye has got its pivot point dead center of the eye. If it's not, go to the edit menu, go to center bounding box, center. This is essential that you've set this up first. Now that we've done this, we need to make sure that we go to the setup mode, go to deformers, and then we select with one of the eyes at a time, transform. By adding this transform deformer, you can see that it's added it inside the actual right eye. This is a deform folder, and this applies this to the eye so that wherever we do to the deformer, it's going to apply it to the eye. This means that we can use it to stretch it and relocate the position of the eye itself. You also notice that it's added one of these effectors here, the transform effector. This is the actual thing that we're going to be moving and altering to deform the eye. I'm going to just rename this. I'll do exactly the same thing for the other eye. We need to make sure that we're in setup mode and this allows us to place these locators wherever we want without deforming the eye. This effectively turns off the deformation temporarily. What I like to do is I like to use the match position drop action. And I like to do it from the actual items menu here so we can easily select it. At the moment, both of these locators are positioned in the weld space dead center. This means that we can get a little bit closer to each of the eyes as we do in the next step. So I'm going to make sure that the match position is selected for the drop action. I'm just going to drag and drop that into the right eye. Do exactly the same for the left eye. Because the center bounding box is already set for the eye, it automatically matches that for these locators, which is exactly what we wanted. The next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that both of these are not visible. We don't need to see these locators quite as big. We will eventually turn these off. So let's just select both of these and just take the size down. While we're still in setup mode, I'm going to make a couple more of these. You can see these locators here. And I'm going to just change the size of that. And then I'm going to right click and then duplicate that. Doing exactly the same as before, I'm just going to get closer to these eyes. I'm holding the Control and Alt key to zoom slowly in here. And using the drop action again, the match position, I'm going to drag one of each to each eye. 
And now we're going to select both of these and move these forward. And that's to select one more here and duplicate that. And I'm just going to look from the top and just move this between the two. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that we can actually to see this more clearly. And then we're going to go to the display here and we're going to go to locate a shape. Select the shape to custom and then we're going to make sure that it's set to something like a circle or sphere. I'm going to change the radius of this. This essentially becomes our controller. I'm going to make sure that it's not solid and you can see here we've got style. I'm going to select the style to be replace. This means that we don't see the little tiny locator anymore, the center widget locator. That's exactly how we want it. I'm not going to go to the assembly and change what happens when we select this. In the commands tab in the drop down menu, we can select it to automatically show a tool handle. In this particular case, I want the transform move to show automatically. This way, when we select it, the transform handle shows. Now, these two, two locators are still a little bit too big, so I'm going to just change the size of these. That's better. Now, what I want to do is I want to parent these to the center locator the one that we're going to be using the control handle. So I'm going to drag and drop these into the third one down here. This means that whenever I move the third one, this one right in the center, it's going to move those two as well. The last stage is simply to create a directional constraint. So I'm going to select the left eye. You can see here, this is the transform deformer. I'm going to go to the modify, making sure that you're still in setup. You can see here, and we're going to select this left eye, shift and click on this other locator that we've selected directly in front of it. And then we select direction. And that's created a directional constraint. We do exactly the same for the other eye. We select that. Shift, click on the other locator, which is directly in front of it, and then do a directional constraint. I'm not going to select both of these, and I want to make sure that both of these are not visible. They don't need to be visible. Also the same with these two locators. They don't need to be visible either. I'm just going to go back in there. I'm going to just change how this visually looks. I'm going to add draw option. And because it's not solid object, we want to be changing the color for the wireframe. User. I'm going to create it so it's a bit more visible in the scene there. Yeah, that's better. Now that we've done this, when we come out of setup mode, when we click on this, the deformation handle show, and the eyes follow it. Remembering that it's not really altering the geometry permanently. If we turn off the deformations, We disable the deformers, 
you notice the eyes will completely ignore. Also, when we go back up to the setup, it will completely ignore as well. This is a non-destructive way of deforming your geometry. When you're in setup mode, before you apply any deformations for this, what you want to do is you want to make sure that we've got everything positioned exactly where you want it, that you go to the zero all. This means that when we are deforming it, we can easily put it back to its original position that we want it to be. So no deformations appear. Let's get a little bit closer to this. We can go to reset and it puts it exactly where it was when it was in setup mode, dead center. So I hope you found this informative and helpful and um, of course experiment, you can apply this to lots of different things. This is part, a small part of the power of deforms and of directional constraints. So thanks for watching, bye for now.